Hey everybody. I got a really good question the other day about pH and carbonate hardness and I really had to think about it for a little while before I answered it. And so today in this video I actually want to talk about the question and my answer. Now I want to make it perfectly clear from the get-go that I did not do any research. I didn't look up the answer to this question. I simply thought about it and I used my knowledge of how pH and carbonates and buffering and all that kind of stuff works. And I came up with what I think is the correct answer to the question I got. And so if I'm wrong, please let me know. Again, this is all just kind of thinking out loud on my part, but I think it's a good conversation to have. And so we're gonna talk about it. The question I got was, I've got two degrees carbonate hardness, but I have a pH of 7.8. And my understanding was always that carbonate hardness and pH go hand in hand. So if I've got a really low carbonate hardness, shouldn't I have a really low pH? How do I have a pH of 7.8 and yet have a carbonate hardness of only two? That doesn't make any sense. And I thought about it for a little bit and at first thought, I would tend to say, yeah, I tend to associate a higher uh, pH with a higher carbonate hardness and a lower carbonate hardness with a lower pH, but that's not necessarily true. So I started thinking about what makes the pH the pH, and that is the total number of hydrogen ions you have in your water. That's what the pH is a measurement of. And you can sort of, in a rough and ready kind of way, you can think of the, the hydrogen ions as being the acid in the tank. So the more hydrogen ions there are, the more acid there is, the lower your pH is gonna be. So if you've got water, now let's first start thinking about water. Not a fish tank, not a living aquarium, but just water, a, a, a container of water. And we're not going to think about the carbonates just yet. We're going to set that part off to the side. Let's just think about a pH of 7.8. What gives us a pH of 7.8? It's the measurement of the amount of hydrogen ions that are in the water. So if you've got whatever amount it is that gives you a pH of 7.8, that's where your pH of 7.8 comes from. The carbonate hardness has nothing to do with that. It's simply how much acidity there is in the water. So you can have no carbonate hardness whatsoever and still have a pH of 7.8. Where the carbonate hardness comes into play is how much it's going to stay at 7.8. The carbonate hardness is your buffering capacity. Now, a lot of people talk about our water being either acidic or alkaline, and that's not entirely true. It's either acidic or it's basic. The alkalinity is your tank's buffering capacity. And we also call this alkalinity our carbonate hardness. So if you've got this body of water, not a fish tank, if you've got water that has a, a pH of 7.8 and you have no carbonate hardness whatsoever, if you've got zero carbonate hardness and you've got a pH of 7.8, Nothing's, if there's nothing introducing hydrogen ions into that water, there's not going to be anything to make that pH move. It's not going to go up or down. It's just going to sit there at 7.8. So you can have zero carbonate hardness and still have a very stable pH if there's nothing causing that pH to move. So the pH and the carbonate hardness don't necessarily have to go hand in hand. Where it gets a little different is when we start talking about a living aquarium. I can think of two uh, things right off the top of my head that are sources of hydrogen ions that will lower your pH. Almost all aquariums will experience a gradual downward drift in pH over time. The first source is going to be your fish directly. They are producing CO2, comes out of their gills and dissolves directly into the water. And when CO2 dissolves into water, that is carbonic acid, and so that will lower your pH. Now, that will, you, you'll, you'll get a sort of stable amount of CO2 in your water. The CO2 won't keep building up and building up, but what's happening is as your fish are producing more, some of it is off-gassing out of the tank, and so you're constantly still adding CO2. So that will give you this gradual downward drift in your pH, even though the amount of CO2 in the tank appears to be stable there's still always a continual production of CO2 going on in the tank as long as you've got living animals in there. So that will give you a gradual downward drift in your pH. The other thing is, again, from the fish producing waste products, ammonia, the nitrogen cycle 
produces hydrogen ions during the process of the cycle. The nitrates themselves are not acidic. Nitrates are actually inert. They don't really have any impact on anything really, including your fish. But the process of getting those nitrates, the process of going from ammonia to nitrate produces hydrogen ions. So as long as your nitrogen cycle is functioning, you're going to be putting acid into your tank. You're going to be putting hydrogen ions into your tank. And the more hydrogen ions that build up, the lower your pH goes. So again, over time, you're gonna get this gradual downward drift just because it's a functioning living aquarium without any buffering capacity is what I'm talking about here. So when we start thinking about what buffering capacity is in the situation that we started this conversation with, if you've got a low carbonate hardness of two degrees, which most of my tanks prior to any uh, additives, my, my water only has about two degrees carbonate hardness. So if you've got 7.8 pH and you've got two degrees carbonate hardness, that is some buffering capacity. So now it depends on how much acid is being introduced into the water. If you've got a little bit of carbonate hardness, but you've only got a few fish that are only producing a little bit of acid, if they balance each other out, your, your pH is still gonna stay stable. You don't have to have a lot of carbonate hardness to keep the pH stable if you don't have a lot of acid being produced. If you've got a high stocking load and a lot of woodwork and stuff like that, you got a lot of rotten vegetation in there breaking down and a really vigorous nitrogen cycle going on in your tank, and you've only got a little bit of buffering capacity with a lot of acid being produced, the hydrogen ions are going to overwhelm the buffering capacity and you're going to get a gradual buildup of those hydrogen ions. And in that case, you're going to get a downward drift in your pH. Remember, the more hydrogen ions, the smaller the pH number. So the number goes down as the hydrogen ions increase and it can get kind of confusing, but that's the way that works. So when we get back to our buffering capacity to our acid, if we've only got a little bit of acid being produced and a little bit of buffering capacity, if there's more buffering capacity, it's gonna sort of gobble up all that acid and now your pH is gonna come up to wherever that amount of buffering capacity is gonna stabilize it. So it's always this balancing game between how much acid is being produced versus how much buffering capacity do you have. Now again, two degrees hardness or, or carbonate hardness is a fairly low buffering capacity, but it is buffering capacity. So in the question I got, I'm not 100% sure how stable their pH was at 7.8. It may have dropped over time, but to have a pH of 7.8 and a very low carbonate hardness, that's not really that difficult to achieve. You just have to have a pH of 7.8 and you don't have a lot of carbonate hardness in the water. For it to stay at 7.8 in a living aquarium with a very low pH, now you have to have a very low stocking density or maybe if you've got a lot of plants that are actually pulling the ammonia out of the water before it has a chance to go through the nitrogen cycle. Because remember, it's the cycle that is producing the hydrogen ions. So if the plants are pulling the ammonia and the nitrate out of the water, that's pulling some of the potential hydrogen ions out of the water. The plants are pulling uh, CO2 out of the water. Again, this is pulling some of the acid out of the water. That carbonic acid in the water being pulled out by the plants is going to reduce your acidity or raise your pH as well. So there are other things going on than simply your buffering capacity. You have to consider how much hydrogen ions are being produced versus what can then be done with those hydrogen ions. And that's what's going to cause your pH to move around. So that's my thoughts on the question I got about the higher uh, pH with the lower carbonate hardness. And again, it gets into a little bit of a different scenario when you start talking about long term and downward drift and all that kind of stuff in a living functioning uh, aquarium. But I think I touched on all the bases that I had been sort of mulling over in my head. And I hope I at least got other people's juices flowing and got you thinking about it and maybe asking some questions or maybe correcting me on some of my misunderstandings or whatever. Uh, but I think that's a good conversation starter because pH and carbonate hardness and all that stuff can be really tricky. Uh, 
I know I've struggled with it for years. I finally feel like I'm starting to sort of come to grips with it. And now that I have, I'm all anxious to share that information with everybody else. So again, if I'm sort of near the mark, but not on it, by all means, I have no problem being corrected or being given additional information or whatever, have at it, uh, correct me, you know, correct away. Anyway, make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss anything I got coming up. You never know what it's going to be with me. So thanks for watching this one. Don't forget this here is my 125 gallon new world tank. Thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.